Greetings, everyone. I'm Dale Van de Bogart, and this is the Gospel Word. Welcome to the Gospel Word with Dale Van de Bogart, the too good to be true good news of the Lord Jesus Christ. And now, here's Dale. All right, welcome everyone to the Gospel Word. And I, again, we'd like to welcome everyone, especially our faithful watchers and our first-time watchers as well. Uh, and always, as a reminder now, all of our notes from all of our broadcasts are located on our new file sharing site, MediaFire.com. So if you go into our features section on our Facebook page and and uh, and click the right scroll arrow and open the Gospel Word, you'll see all the links there. You click on the links and you can start downloading the notes, no problem. All free at charge. Now, this week's broadcast or segment uh, is called Know Your Enemy. And I'm going to discuss our enemy, who's Satan, his origin, personality, goals, and to clarify a very common statement many make about God and Satan. So what I'd like everyone to do, we're going to have, we have a lot of passages, but our main passage is, so if you want to open your Bibles, and it's very, our main passage is Ephesians chapter 6, verse 12. And, uh, and I'm going to read it from the New King James Version, so you can read it from any version you have. So Ephesians 6, 12, so this is the start of the, uh, of the whole armor of God. So Paul writes, for we do not wrestle with, against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. Now, see, our enemy is Satan. and It's an enemy we cannot see in the physical senses, but attempts to control us in any manner possible. Now, he's been our enemy since the creation of heaven and earth. He goes by many names describing who he is and how others perceive him. See, the most common name to our enemy, of course, is Satan. But he goes by other names, such as devil, tempter, accuser, and liar. See, Jesus called him the evil one. You may read that in, in, in different, uh, in different uh, versions of, of, of the Bible. Um, it may be King James or New King James or the... English Standard Version, uh, you may see you may see Jesus calling him the evil one. So let's look at our main passage, Ephesians chapter six, verse twelve. So the Apostle Paul called uh, Satan's helpers as principalities, rulers, and spiritual weaknesses and in, in uh, wickedness in high places. So this suggests. A definite army of demonic creatures that assist Satan in his attacks against believers. Now, the Apostle John wrote in, in the book of Revelation, chapter 12, verse 4, that one third of the angels fell with Satan when he rebelled against God. And in the book of Daniel, chapter 10, verses 13 through 20, Satan's angels struggle against God's angels for control of the affairs of nations. Now, a, a, a spiritual battle is going on in this world, and in the sphere of the heavenlies, you and I are part of this battle. See, knowing this makes walking in victory a vital, very vital, important thing to us and to God. See, the important part is that our battle is not against human beings. See, it's against spiritual powers. See, we're wasting our time fighting, or really fighting, I don't want to say physically fighting people, we ought to be fighting Satan, who seeks to do his work through people and make them oppose the work of God. See, we can fight. 
fight Satan by the Bible and, and helping others, bringing them to saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. That's how we beat Satan. See, our enemy's existence is to prevent people, groups, and nations from knowing, worshiping, and serving the one and true only God. To know and understand our enemy better, well, we need to expose his origin, personality, and goals that he has for all of humanity. See, by knowing our enemy, we can resist what he tries to deceive us with. Remember, the only power that Satan has is by our consent and cooperation that we give him. So let's look at the origin of Satan for just a moment. So his origin starts out as a creature created by God. See, he, doesn't, he does not possess the same attributes that belong to God, such as omnipresence, omnipotence, omniscience, no. All-knowing, all-seeing, and being everywhere. See, he, you know, because he's not everywhere. Oh, he's not all-powerful. He's not all-knowing. And he's not a very loving person as well, not like God. At all. See, through a mighty being, but limited in, in power. And as a creature, God will hold him accountable for his actions. This is the truth to Satan. This is not the Hollywood stuff. Get off that Hollywood stuff. They're not telling you all the truth. Believe me, they're not telling you the truth. They pose Satan as this big, powerful creature with a big tail and horns and a pitchfork. No, he doesn't. He has no power. He doesn't even look like that. See, Satan is a spirit once called the anointed covered cherub who enjoyed the position of the highest honor before God. Full of wisdom and beauty and perfection, God gave him the name Lucifer, knowing, known as the morning star and the greatest angel in heaven. Then came the moment of rebellion and five times voiced his will in opposition to God. Now these five wills are, can be read in the book of Isaiah chapter 14 verses 13 through 14. See, in these five I wills, he said that he will ascend to heaven, exalt my throne above the stars of God, sit on the mount of the, of the congregation, ascend above the heights of the clouds, and be like the Most High. Therefore, Satan thought he was equal to God, which he's not. God has no equal. Wanting to rule over angels, heaven, earth, and the universe. He wanted equal standing like God, and to receive all the glory and power. Due to his pure arrogance, God threw him from heaven, kicked him out of heaven. Now let's look at his personality. See, just like angels, he possesses the personality to, to make an attempt to prevent people from knowing God. The Bible speaks of his personality as possessing strong intelligence knows every scripture in the Bible and attempts and attempts using his powers of deception to manipulate others into believing false teaching. That's another power he has is deception. He deceives everyone. He embraces strong emotions. His two favorites are anger and desire. Desires to keep others away from knowing God and the real reasons Jesus died on the cross and gets angry when one of his lost souls accepts Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. Satan is also a noted liar. The foundations of his kingdom is built on lies and deceit. Some of the many lies he'll tell you is that God 
does not love anyone who sins. Jesus didn't die on the cross for all the sins of humanity. And also to accept sexual immorality as the normal in our society today. See, he'll use just enough of the truth to trick us into falling for his lies, to make sure that we fall or never find what grace is all about. John 8.44 says, For he is a liar and the father of it. Jesus quoted that. Let's look at Satan's goals. See, his goal is to create a system that rivals or is opposite of God's kingdom. See, he's creating what we call a counterfeit kingdom. This order promotes lying, cheating, stealing, immorality, and complete hostility towards God. To achieve those goals, he feeds on three common human weaknesses found in 1 John chapter 2, verse 16. First one is the loss of the flesh. See, this includes anything that appeals to our fallen nature. When the Apostle John spoke of the flesh, he didn't mean the body. He referred to how blind we are to spiritual truth. See, God has given man certain desires, and these desires are good, like hunger, thirst, weakness, and sex are not all evil in themselves. See, there's nothing wrong about eating, drinking, sleeping, or begetting children. See, the issue is when the flesh uh, nature controls them. They become sinful lusts. See, hunger is not evil, but gluttony is sinful. Thirst is not evil, but drunkenness is a sin. Sleep is a gift of God, but laziness is shameful. And sex is God's precious gift when used rightly, but when used wrongly, it becomes immoral immorality or immoral. Now you can see how the world operates. See, it appeals to normal appetites and tempts us to satisfy them in forbidden ways. In today's world, we are surrounded by all kinds of temptations that appeal to our lower nature. If a Christian yields to the flesh or their temptations, he will get involved in the works of the flesh, as we read in the book of Galatians, chapter 5, verses 19 through 21. The second, of course, is lust of the eyes. See, sometimes we forget the eyes have an appetite just like the flesh. See, most of us have heard the phrase, feast your eyes on this. See, the lust of the flesh appeals to the lower appetites of the old nature tempting us to indulge in sinful ways. Now, the lust of the eyes, however, operates in a more defined way, such as pleasures that gratify the sight and the mind, sophisticated and intellectual pleasures. See, the eyes, like other senses, are a gateway into the mind. The lust of the eyes, therefore, can include intellectual pursuits that are contrary to God's word. There are pressures to make Christians think the way the world thinks. God warns us against the counsel of the ungodly. This does not mean Christians should ignore education and secular learning. It does mean they, uh, they are careful not to let the world's intellect place God into the background. And the last of all, and the last of those three is the pride, of, pride in life. Or you might hear the pride of life. See, God's glory is rich and full, and Satan's glory is vain and empty. The Greek word for pride was used to describe a person who was trying to impress others with their importance. See, people have always tried to outdo others, kind of like uh, uh, what was that's that old saying, uh, um, keeping up with the Joneses. That's it. See, and others in their spending and their achievements. The, uh, the boastful pride of life motivates much of what such people do. So why is it, and I'll ask this question, so many people buy houses, 
cars, appliances, and other things they really can't afford. Why do they succumb to the travel now, pay later advertising and get themselves into hopeless debt, taking vacations far beyond their means? Largely because they want to impress other people. They may want folks to notice how affluent or successful they are. Many of us uh, do not go that far. But it's amazing what ridiculous things people do just to make an impression. They even sacrifice honesty and integrity in return for notoriety and a feeling of importance. So what do we need to do to combat these things is that we need to be very careful of Satan's schemes. Because once Satan gets control of those worldly thoughts, he continues to achieve additional goals, such as making make people give top priority to themselves, wanting, wanting, me, wanting me more of me, and the here and now. See, therefore, Satan attempts to convince us that self, not God, should be first in our lives, and the here and now is more important than trying to achieve eternal life through Jesus Christ. Yes, Satan tries to appeal to the Christian through the lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. See, once a Christian allows Satan to take over any of these areas, a Christian will soon realize it. They'll lose their enjoyment of God's love and their desire to do God's will in their lives. The Bible will become boring and prayer a difficult chore. Even Christian fellowship may seem empty and disappointing. Why this happens is because the Christian's worldly heart, and it's a, it's a heart issue. It is important to note that no Christian becomes worldly all of a sudden. See, worldliness creeps up on a believer. It is a gradual process. A Christian who is a friend of the world is an enemy of God. Now, let me, before we end, clear up this statement between God and Satan that, and I, that many people have. And I'm going to clear this up right now. Now, the statement, if Satan is such a dreadful enemy, then why does God allow him to continue to be a force in the world? Now again, let me let me allow me to clarify this statement for you. And I'll use the Gospel of John, chapter 14, verse 30. I will no longer talk much with you, for the ruler of this world is coming, and he has nothing in me. See, Satan for now rules the world. He possesses no power over Christians. So he's not running amok as others might think. We as Christians have the power and the authority over Satan thanks to Jesus' atoning death on the cross. As mentioned previously, the only power Satan has is through our consent and cooperation. That's it. That's all he has. Don't watch and listen to that Hollywood stuff because they're lying to you. Fact, they're lying to you. All they want is sensationalism to put you in fear. See, it was Satan who brought sin in this world in the first place. Genesis chapter 3. And Jesus will remove all sin and Satan from this world once and for all. Read that in the book of Revelation, chapter 20, verses 7 through 10. See, God is a good God. He doesn't promote evil in any way, shape, or form. His plan is unfolding. He is the one who is omnipresent. He's omnipotent. 
He's omni-instant. And he's omni-belelephant. That means he is all-loving. God does not change. Did you know he is the same yesterday, today, and forever? That's Hebrews 13, verse 8. God knows exactly what Satan has planned and does spoil his attacks. He consistently attacked Jesus' bloodline and tried to get him killed many times by the religious leaders and failed every time. Why? Because it's in the will and plan of God. And if it's in the God's will and his plan, it is going to happen. No matter what anybody thinks, no matter what you're going to do, or how you think you're going to do it. Look at Jonah. Jonah's like, no, God, I'm not going to Nivea. I'm going to Tarsus. Look what happened. He eventually went to Nivea. Had to. Because God says, oh, no, I don't think so. And he went to Nivea anyways. Now let me conclude. See, as Christians in the world that we live in today, we are to take the time to know who our enemy really is and to better equip disciples for our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. See, we should have the desire to know Satan's origin, who he is, why did he fall from grace. Knowing his personality, allowing us to fight off those of constant attacks and to evangelize to others about his constant lies to keep them from Jesus Christ. That's why we have the whole armor of God. Read that whole chapter 6. Read it all. Read every bit of it. Read the whole armor of God and put it on. You'll look good, let me tell you. You need it. Every bit of it. See, we can impede his goals by simply refusing not to part uh, not to be a part of the world. We can do this by keeping our eyes totally focused on God through Jesus Christ and not get caught up in the cares of the world. You know, uh, I have some teaching on the whole armor of God that, that's on our YouTube channel. Search it out. Listen to it. Good teaching. Finally, you know the world hates us, but that's better than losing eternal life, which is what Satan is trying to convince Christians to give up. See, 1 Peter chapter 5, verses 8 and 9 simply says, be sober-minded, that means be aware. Be watchful. Your adversary, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion, seeking someone to devour. Resist him. Firm in your faith. Key. Firm in your faith. Knowing that the same kinds of suffering are being experienced by your brotherhood, everyone, throughout the world. Amen? And I'm Dale Van de Bogart, and I fully agree on God's word. And if you're sick and tired of, of, of living the life that Satan has, has thrown you into, and you're getting tired of it, and you want to live a better life, and you want to resist him, and you want to kick him to the curb, well, there's one way to do it, and it's the only way, and that is to, give, is to, is to make Jesus Christ the Lord of your life, accepting him again as Lord and Savior. And you know you can do that right now. You go to our Facebook page. Facebook.com slash bdbm.org. And in the features, in the featured section, we have I think called it's called free gift. Why don't you open that up and read it? And at the bottom we and and, and, and we have a prayer that you can recite that you can say and you say it from your heart and you'll accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. And you can kick that old devil to the curb. Amen? Hallelujah. And welcome to the family. Your name will be written in the Lamb's Book of Life. And we 
and we have a lot of information right there on our Facebook page that you can that you can read and that you can uh, down you can download download our notes read our notes it will strengthen you and strengthen your faith to where you tell that old devil take a hike. So I want to sit here right now and I want to pray for you. For I want to pray for you right now. Father Lord, we come before you in the name of Jesus at your throne of grace and mercy. And we thank you for this broadcast. We thank you for everyone watching. Bless them, Father, in their days. Watch over them. Father, Satan is just running amok. And we can stop him by your word. We can stop him by going out and, and bring in the gospel of Jesus Christ to the lost and help you bring in more so, a harvest of souls. And Father, right now, I pray that anyone who here is within hearing distance of this broadcast and my voice, may they feel that emptiness inside their heart. And may they know that the only way that emptiness will go away and that peace will overcome it is to accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. And may today be that day. And may all Christians learn today how to resist that old nasty devil and to kick him to the curb and to worship you and to live in your blessing and your love. And we thank you we love you, we praise you, we give you all the glory. In Jesus' mighty name we pray, amen. Mm. Amen to that. I want to thank everyone for watching. I hope that you received a huge blessing from this broadcast and the other broadcasts on our YouTube channel. Don't forget to subscribe. Also, too, Everything we do, we post on our Facebook page. Like and follow us. You'll be glad you did. Again, thank you for watching. God loves you. We love you. Be blessed.